What's up everybody? It's Halion and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I kind of want to go over it's kind of a guide, you know, more of a live guide where I discuss how to earn gold faster in Rogue Legacy 2 especially here. So uh, I'm going to go through some instances here. I'll give you some basic tips and everything like that. Number one, I would normally only suggest really taking an air that gives you a, the biggest gold bonus you can find really. Just whatever the biggest one it is, except for maybe Vertigo. Just roll with that, even if the run only lasts a few minutes. Oftentimes, that is your best gold per minute ratio that you can earn. Uh, but I also wanted to show, you know, if you don't have any gold multipliers, like how well can you do, how much can you actually get, and stuff like that. So there's going to be lots of cuts and jumps around to kind of show. Because uh, a run like this is probably going to last a long time. Another thing is, when it comes to choosing your classes and your traits and stuff like that, there are some classes that I think are better. I personally really like uh, just for playing the my favorite classes are probably like Barbarian, the Knight, Valkyrie, especially maybe the Duelist, maybe the Assassin, those kind of ones. I do not like the Boxer personally. The Mages and the ones that focus more on spells I don't usually love, but I also really like the Chef. The Chef actually does really well and is really great at sustaining because of the heal that they have with the stew there. So you can actually get a lot of survivability out of the chef and last a really long time, even with, you know, some negative traits that give you a massive gold bonus. So the chef, I think, is actually potentially one of the best uh, gold farmers that you can have out there. But yeah, uh, I'll take you around uh, and I'll show you what's going on. Now, here's my castle skill tree. And uh, the first thing I really wanted to uh, showcase was the fact that really there's it doesn't really matter though you do it's linear so everything gets more expensive the more stuff you buy but the order doesn't actually matter the only thing i'd really suggest to make sure you pour your money into and always have at max level best you can is the repurposed mining shaft because it just gives you more gold for each gold trait so you're spending money to earn money kind of thing so you might as well just top this off every chance you get of course i don't have it topped off right now <laughs> but i think i spent some pearls on it recently that increased the max level so that might explain that all right, so here we are in the castle, and I just want to quickly go over what's going on for me. So I am on New Game Plus 6. I don't really want to explain any of that stuff for anyone who is trying to avoid spoilers about the game here and everything. So I'm just going to avoid all that. But basically, uh, if you're on to the New Game Pluses, you really just want to use the highest that you can because you earn more gold for each one, and you might as well just go up that as high as possible, honestly, at any point. And what I'd mostly recommend after that is really just farming the first, like, couple zones uh, for as much gold as possible. Because uh, the first couple zones are just, especially this, the first area here in the castle, it is just the enemies are very simple, very straightforward. There's really not a lot of surprises that can really get you, I think. Uh, here's the equipment I'm currently running for the chef here. It's about intelligence and uh, siphon right now which means i get a lot of healing back uh when i do use this do it covers like almost half my health and yeah so when you're want to earn gold i do recommend you pretty much just you smash every piece of furniture you smash every candle you might want to save some spots for something like uh recovering health if you're worried about it now we do got an elite here that could be problematic i would normally recommend you actually avoid these you can earn Uh, ore and stuff like that from them. Oops. Ooh, they're immune to damage all of a sudden. I'm noticing. Yeah, and now I'm almost dead. That's okay. <laughs> That's why we're using the chef. They also hit a lot harder, but you don't really get a lot of money from that. So what I would have recommended actually was to es essentially just skip that fight with the big enemy there, just to show you how dangerous it really is. And don't even fight them. Just kind of go around the rooms, kill the easy enemies. I think my rune setup is a little off because I was fighting some bosses recently. Here as well. Because normally I would have like lifesteal on kill and stuff like that on. But yeah, you really just want to go like really slow. Like some other small tips I can give are definitely when you go into a room, just stay don't you don't want to rush in. You you clock in, right? You kind of gather your surroundings, and then you decide how you want to do it. You can reset the room. Uh, by leaving it right after you have entered it. And then you can decide how you want to handle the room after that. If you've already killed the enemies, they will not respawn. If you've only injured them, they will get their health back, though. Getting a little low. So potions will restore 
the stew for the chef as well as food. So there's a lot of sustainability here. You can see the monsters are pretty high leveled for me right now. I'm actually quite under leveled at this point here. So they're taking a lot of hits for me. There we go. We got a potion there. It's going to recover another soup. And suddenly it feels we feel a lot safer. We got two soups that we can use in our health stat 804, which isn't too terrible. And yeah, I'm kind of just going to go around and do this and I'll show you guys. I'll survive for as long as possible. I'll show you guys uh, whatever I can find and point out anything that I can help with you. So here's a room here that has a chest and I really want to try to get to the chest, but there might be times where the chest is simply too dangerous. So you got to kind of choose your battles a little bit more and things like that. And there's really no harm in running away and just choosing, you know, this is not a good room for you. You know, you just don't think you're going to do well in it. Especially if you're not farming gold, you really got to pick your battles very, very wisely. It's really important to remember as the chef that you can reflect the, all the small projectiles with the frying pan here, which is really useful. All right, so we do have some apples here. I'm thinking we do take the max health, which means I do take a hit of damage here, but... I'm just going to use our soup to get back a good portion of it there. Seems like we should be okay. All right, we got some relics here. Um, I'm probably just going to take Hyperion's Ring and try to make the run last as long as possible again. Kind of give you an idea of how long uh, this is going to last and everything. Uh, if you get to these loading chambers and other zones don't be afraid to pop in especially if you're low on health just destroy all the little doodads around you know you can often find some meat and stuff like that around but after that i wouldn't really like this is a pretty high level zone here at this point the enemies are going to be a lot tougher so farming in this zone is actually rather difficult i i i think I mean, there could come a point where, you know, you kind of run out of uh, enemies and chests and things and in the other places, and you got to start going into the more dangerous ones. But at that point, you might have more relics that might make it easier anyway, too. So it's best to wait, I think. So this is one of these crazy rooms I was talking about. You can see all, all the different enemies and, like, how insane it gets. Luckily, again, as the chef... I can kind of just stand in what is a safe place, and you just got to go slow and just pick your spots and stuff like that, you know? And there's really no reason to rush there. All right. Ooh. A little close. Yeah. I don't think I have much use for fairy chests at this point. I also made a mistake in my loadout because I started a new thread, so I didn't get the chance to customize for a gold run here. But yeah, this is sort of a run where you maybe made some mistakes and didn't uh, set up the run very well, just like how much gold you can get this way. And we'll compare to how much gold you get if you actually really planned for it, you know, and how quickly you can get it is another important matter because it might feel good if you go home with 100,000 gold, but if it took you an hour to get it, then it might, you might kind of realize like, oh, well, maybe that's not really worth it when you could have gotten, you know, like 30K in five minutes. Does that make sense? But yeah, I'm going to continue exploring the first area for now and then we'll move on to the second, etc. But yeah, there's runes that I could have uh, equipped that increases our gold gain and stuff like that too. They used to have equipment during early access that increases your gold gain. I'm kind of glad they changed that because I didn't really like having to change my equipment just to uh, decide to do a gold run in between actual progress runs. But I think that's the important thing, to, another important thing to bring up is that you just got to decide when you're going to do a gold run versus when you're going to do a progress run. You know, like if, if this is a strong character that you think you can beat the next boss with, then, you know, focus on that, focus on not getting hit. And just getting to the boss as quickly as possible. Does that make sense? That bounce got me there. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I let something so silly hit me. I do still have the Hyperion's Ring, so... Ugh. It feels silly to die from something 
like that, but it's okay. The run still continues for now. All right, so we fully mapped out the entire first area here. We have just over 70,000 gold. I have not beaten the first boss yet. I'm going to skip it uh, for now because I'm not necessarily comfortable at this point to put that fight in there. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I'm not comfortable that I'll win right now uh, with my current burden set up and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it and we're going to move on to the second area and see how we can get along over there. Now, in the second area here, I definitely still want to check out all these houses. They can have relics for us. They can have fairy chests. You definitely want to take a peek in them. You can still destroy some stuff in here for gold or meat and stuff like that. Like, even this potion is very useful because it gives me a stew back still. Yeah, we probably want to keep the weapon, I think, for now. So I'm not going to play around with that. All right, so we've just completed all of the second area here. Axis Mundi, I got every single chest. I didn't necessarily kill every single enemy, but it was probably pretty close. So again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but seeking out the chest, I definitely recommend. But trying to kill every single enemy is usually not really worth the danger. Right now, we're sitting at 123,000 gold. You can see that even with an extra 20% gold bonus, we didn't get as much money as farming the entire first area. I think the second area is just a bit smaller overall. I also might have just picked up more equipment or something that might have just so happened to not notice as much gold. But yeah, uh, the, here's a little secret for you. If you're looking to get past the second area into the plateau uh, here, if you have all the abilities necessary, in case you don't know. Ah, look at that. This way you don't have to fight the second boss if you just want to move on and see if you can get some more gold. So let's move on to the third area, and we'll see what we can get out of that. But I am looking a little low on resources. That potion will help, though, and we'll see how we do. Ah, suddenly we feel a lot better. Now, you might be wondering, like, tips for specific zones and stuff like that. I think the second zone kind of has a lot more traps with the arrows that come out and point at you. I think the main thing that can catch me by surprise in this area are the zombies that pop out of the snow. You'll see some kind of, like, ruffling in the snow if there is a zombie. These wolves that you just saw in this room are actually really dangerous. They just jump really far. They're kind of unpredictable when they jump, how they jump, and stuff like that. So you just got to be really careful, as always, uh, here. And again, like, don't be afraid to avoid the combat. It's really uh, often no benefit. I mean, yes, you do earn some gold from killing some enemies at times, but I think you're better off just trying to get to the chest instead most of the time. You gotta watch out for these cracks in the wall. I mean, you can just always look at the map and see that there's a chest up here, which will tip you off for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's how you open up, and you have to use a spell or a skill to open it. So something like the spell that we have there uh, will crack that open for us. These are quest items, so they do cost resolve. I don't really have any plans of uh, making use of them right now, so we're gonna go ahead and leave them and move on. Uh, just looking for some money. Very good. Lots of moolah. After, if I... It looks like we might be able to finish this third area. And at that point, that's when... It's like I almost would want to consider just taking a dive. Not necessarily... Well, not necessarily taking a dive, but taking a stab at something like the first boss to see if we could just beat it. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize what killed me there. It looks like the zombie got us at the last minute there. <laughs> Popped out of the ground. Hey, but I got the chef to rank 18. Look at all these kills and stuff like that. All right, so that took us about 45 to 50 minutes. And we cleared almost the entire third zone as well. We got 169,000 gold. Beast amount of ore, 257 enemy skilled. No bosses or anything like that. So, you know, like almost 200k per hour kind of thing. You could look at it that way. Uh, so we'll I'll do I'll put the math on here and I'll have a better timer up so you can have like a better judgment of uh, what's taking how long it takes to get this or that. OK, um, but yeah, let's do another run and I'll give you the more ideal setup now. All right, so we're back at the castle and uh, I'm selecting hero and I'm noticing pacifist here in Sir Judson. <laughs> this is a samurai so 60 percent less health and you can't deal damage they do have this rage tincture which won't matter at all but it's a 360 uh, percent gold bonus so i'd call that pretty massive i think we can go ahead and snag them and see 
what's going on. So I did max out uh, the repurposed mining shaft in between runs here. So we cannot attack. We cannot deal damage. You can spin kick off of things, but it just doesn't hurt enemies. You got to remember. So we will will not be able to kill any enemies. Uh, for equipment, I'm probably going to swap some stuff around here. Because right now I have kind of... Uh, Strength-based stuff, but really there's no point to that. So I might as well put on things like armor or vitality. All right, I think that's about the best I can do. I'm kind of a mix of armor and vitality. It's understandable if you don't want to swap around the equipment every single time uh, you start a new run. So I definitely get it uh, that you might not want to bother. I also want to show the rune set up here. So the main thing is I took the life steal rune, which isn't going to help this run really. Uh, but also bounty rune, of course, you know, that's an extra 40% gold bonus. Uh... But yeah, we'll get the run started and we'll see uh, we'll see how we do on the gold. All right, this time in the top right, I've had a timer that I'm starting right now, and we can see how we do. So again, I'm just going to be spin kicking off of as much terrain, avoiding enemies, and just trying to snag chests in between them there. I really want to avoid all conflicts as possible. I also got a Magnesis rune, which I really should have had on in the previous as well it just makes things a bit more convenient in terms of collecting gold and stuff all right we got our first chest here we can see what we get out of it that's already quite a bit of gold i'd say i'm still going to destroy all the lanterns here as well now even as the pacifist you can actually break open these magical walls here because you must have realized like it's kind of not fair because you can't actually cast spells, so they made it so the peace sign can actually crack those open. Alright, so we're at a passage here. I did take a hit. Um, so we're probably only going to survive. Actually, no, the next hit it will probably kill us. Kind of depends on what kind. There's two chests up there. Checking just what's in every single room around you in a little room like this can really help you. This one's a bit more dangerous in my eyes. Although this one with the double chest is probably even harder I'm trying to see if i can find some meat maybe before trying to do this because i can still heal all right well i managed to survive that hit snag some gold Woo we're up to sixty-two thousand already Ugh. Now the question is, what do I try to do now? I could try to grab this chest. I know it hasn't been a long time, but... Like, we haven't survived very long. Ooh, nice piece of meat. I probably won't survive another hit, though. Unless it's from, like, a trap or something. Yep, and there we go. <laughs> Still... Pause the timer. Only 5 minutes, 33 seconds, equated to 70,000 gold. I already forgot what we got in the last one, but it was, it was, uh... It was definitely not worth to do that really long run when I earned 70,000 in this short amount of time. You know, it just it was just way better. I mean, almost 100,000. We easily could have had 100,000 under 10 minutes if I kept going. So maybe I'll do one more quick example to show you just how worth it it is to do these kinds and uh yeah yeah and that'll be the end of the video and if you got questions make sure you leave them in the comments below here we'll see if we can get a little bit higher in a run like that where we have like a high gold modifier there all right so i finally found something here and i think i have the perfect setup here you have osteogenesis and perfect uh however you say it plus 480 percent gold panic attacks if you get hit, then your screen gets darkened temporarily, so that doesn't matter because we'll be dead anyway in one hit. Uh, I don't know. I could just be dead in Chamber 1, but plus 600% gold. Again, like, you don't want to turn down these opportunities because, yeah, you're not going to get very far and stuff like that, but the odds that you earn, like, a, just a good chunk of money for the time you spent are pretty decent, really. And plus, it kind of helps you get better at the platforming and just sort of practicing not getting hit best that you can and stuff like that. Uh, but... It, our loadout doesn't really matter here, as far as I can tell. At least for our equipment, because one hit kill is as simple as that, you know what I mean? So let's see how well we can do here. I'll start the run, the timer, as soon as we get in. There we go. Let's see how much gold we can earn, huh? 
I'm trying to see if maybe we can lure them away so that we can get in there. Get the chest. Wow. A little close. And there we go. Took the dive already. <laughs> Not even two minutes in. Got two chests for 39,000, though. So this was actually even better than the previous run as a minute-by-minute -minute basis, as you can see. Like, killing enemies is probably worth it, but uh, trying to kill that big enemy seemed really dangerous. Maybe we'll give... Since that was so fast, maybe we'll try another one really quick here to see if uh, we can get another good, like, gold multiplier here. I was hoping to last a little bit longer. I mean, I do think, like, going for the, the highest percentage is probably worth it when you're just, when your goal is to simply, uh, earn gold. Uh, so here we got a pacifist barbarian here, which is fine by me. 360% is still, uh, decent. But yeah, yeah, uh, doesn't matter here, huh? The one, the traits that I would avoid that I don't think are necessarily even worth the gold percentage, even when farming, are probably... Like, Vertigo is just not fun to me. Diva is just, like, a nightmare and should be worth more, probably, I'd imagine, here. But, uh, yeah, let's see how well we do one more time with the Pacifist. We got some Relics here. I mean, there's a chance that something here might help us. There's this one, but I, yeah, I can't defeat 15 enemies. So that's not gonna happen. I don't know if I'd really recommend taking that even for farming gold. Ah, no, this could be a good one if we get low on health. Depart this world, increase your current gold by 35%. I'm gonna leave that there. We can come back to it, potentially. I might actually end up taking it. I might just move on to the second area. It's also much easier to spot chests in the second area, too. Okay, we've cleared 50% of this zone here. Crack this open, got some health and stuff. I'll even go up here. We'll crack all the merchandise they got hiding up here. Get tiny amounts of gold from it. Food that I don't need, but I can't help myself. All right. When we got to the second boss, obviously we cannot fight the second boss, so we're just gonna keep up with our time here and uh, just move straight on to the third one. See what else we can farm here. You do get more money depending on the zone, like the chests and the, the enemies drop more and stuff like that. So there is an element to wanting to do the harder zones to some degree or another. Comes the dogs. Dang! Didn't get to depart the world, but 186,000. 20, not even 20 minutes. Not as good as the last run, like, uh, as a per minute basis there. But, I mean, still, uh, we took almost an hour to earn less than this amount without the gold modifiers. I, I'm pretty sure lesson learned, you know, to say the least. Uh, you know, again, just these gold modifiers are just way better for your time and stuff like that. And it still does help you practice, uh the platforming and getting from room to room easily and stuff like that. All right, if you guys really liked this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see about Rogue Legacy. I'm thinking of doing some general tips and things like that, and maybe some tier lists on my favorite classes and everything like that. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope it helps. Let me know if it did in the comments, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye now. Pardon me, could I have a meowment of your time, YouTube? It's me, Grandpa. Halion's beloved kitty cat wonder. If you love this hysterical content, pitter patter your way over to twitch.tv forward slash Halion, where we stream every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. I loaf you. Nyah.